Hey guys, today I am going to call out other YouTube content creators, those who are most vocal about Black Lives Matter. How many black people have been on Tolarium College? How many on Pleasant Kenobi? On Hipster MTG? Channel Fireball? Star City Games? Writing Staff? What about Pro Teams? How many persons of color at all? Maybe a couple total. And then, of course, um, you see that there people started blocking tweets, including Wizard of the Coast. It's a really compelling question, right? If you truly, if you are a white cis male like Tolarian Community College, like so many in Magic the Gathering, who have made very bold statements, uh, including Wizard of the Coast, which banned seven cards due to depictions of racism, shouldn't you help... Shouldn't Tolarian Community College find someone out there? I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of... Um, when I played Magic in Williamsburg, Virginia, when I went to William Mary Law School, there were plenty of African-American Magic players. So there's not like a lack of them. It's just that they're not being promoted, supposedly promoted the same way that Tolarian Community College would promote many of his guests. So we are in a situation which is kind of weird, right? Where people who are the most vocal about Black Lives Matter and protesting and saying, look at me, I'm so ethically, I'm so pious, I'm so holier than thou. What actions have they taken that we can look at in the past where, hey, hey, looks like there are people of color on this pro team. It looks like there are people of color who are article writers. It looks like, oh, Tolarian Community College had a person of color on today. We have to examine ourselves. Um, and so I own a small business. We have seven employees, including myself. One of the employees is a nursing student and he is African American. His name is Andrew. And then another of my employees is African, just African. And he lives in Nigeria, which, again, I know if you can make funny scams, but I've been working with him for seven years. And yeah, his name is Hudson, and he does very good work. I've been working with him in seven years. Um, I actually, very interesting story. I could probably spend the rest of the video explaining the story of how we met, and we have actually met. So back to this issue, you have a lot of people like Mero like Tolarian Community College, and I'm going to call all of them out because what have you done? How many African Americans have you employed? What percentage of your staff is African American? What percentage of the people you bring to your channel, Tolarian, is African American? Have you thought about it? Is this something that should concern you? Is this something that you're going to change in the future? And when you talk about Mero, um, there's only so much I can go in. I really dislike the guy. It should be pretty obvious from my videos that I don't really care very much for him. He's kind of a scammy guy in my opinion. And when you talk about past history, everyone has a tweet that they regret. But for most people, that tweet is not read by thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. So when you're Mero, even back in 2014, and you're tweeting things, you have to be very careful because you are absolutely are representing the brand of Magic the Gathering, just like the MPL contracts would have you believe, right? Where there's actually a specific clause in the contract that you can do no harm to Magic the Gathering. I think in my uh, in experience, in my opinion... People have been fired for far less as there's the CrossFit CEO. There's numerous amounts of people who have been fired recently over statements they made about Black Lives Matter. The issue to address racism is not to ban cards, in my opinion, even though I think invoke, I personally believe I'm going to lay out there. You guys have had your comments that weren't banned. I'm now going to ban some of you if I want. Um, I think Invoke was a very offensive card. It just had, no, it's just not, I mean, when you have pictures of the KKK, I, I don't really know why that would be. 
A, I don't know how they allowed it because it's pretty obvious what the picture is with the card name. So that, I think, is pretty overt. Cleanse, Gypsy, Jihad, Stone Throwing Devil, those just open a gateway. Now, in my opinion, uh, I own a marketing agency, and I can tell you exactly why Wizards of the Coast is doing this. Their customer base, us, their dedicated customer base who is going to buy $300 plus of double master boxes, who's going to buy the collector's edition of a core set, for God's sake. I mean, gee, <laughs> come on. I mean, they have no interest in us, and they've never really had an interest in us, and they know we can charge them double the price, and they'll still pay for it. We can build crappier cards. We can ban whatever we blanking feel like, and these idiots will still play the game. But we need more idiots to come in. So we need mass media to promote us. It is not... It's pretty obvious. So imagine that you're Wizard of the Coast, you are a company, and you need to increase your revenue. Now, you've already kind of maxed out the current player base because you're selling them double masters, you're selling them collector's editions. Uh, there's already some unrest. Just this month, right? Core. Core collector's edition. Jumpstart. Double masters is coming out in August. Early August. Commander's decks have come out. Challenger decks was pretty recent. I still remember that. And they got banned. Just in the past, in the summertime, it's kind of a slow time for Magic, guys. It's not even a fast time. And we're, we have the pandemic going on and a protest movement. So wh what is going on here? Why do we have so many products? That's not... The discussion for this video, a discussion for a later time, perhaps. The issue I feel is a lot of very sanctimonious people, holier than thou, live in Magic the Gathering. Efro is a very good example, and his recent post is the perfect example. Efro is a white cis male. His wife works for Wizard of Coast, and he's part of the NPL. So he is the most privileged. He is of the most privileged class in Magic the Gathering, MPL members. Because he gets paid, and he gets special invites. You know, he doesn't even have to be good at Magic. He'll get invited to the event of 68 people anyway. And just randomly, you can win. You can, you, I mean, at least you can finish 34, right? Middle of the pack. And then you would get more money for fit, being middle of the pack. So Efro does not realize how privileged he is that he can ban a whole FNM playgroup just by complaining on Twitter. Or he can write an article for Star City Games or Channel Fireball berating someone who refused to concede to him. That's, that's privilege, guys. Efro is privileged. So this very privileged, and I would say the most privileged person in Magic the Gathering, who surprisingly is a white cis male, Tweets, hey, does anyone know any African-American artist? I would like to buy some prints. He doesn't do research. He doesn't Google. He doesn't ask around. He tweets. And some type of person, some middleman said, oh, here's one. I found one. And then that African-American artist rightfully says, there's only one or four of us, depending on the rumors. So essentially, it's either him. Like, he only knows about himself, right? He's never met another African-American artist as an African-American artist. And at maximal, he says there's four. <laughs> what the F? Seriously. And then Ifo's like, oh, awesome, dude. Thank you. What? The blank is happening here. And then people virtue signal him and give him all the upvotes. You couldn't make this up. This is almost like the Twilight Zone. Or for you millennials or new kids, uh, Black Mirror, right? Where the reality is not... And I've always felt that there will be a reckoning. One day, Meryl will lose his job over something that he said in the past. And luckily, I found it. This dude does not deserve to have his job. I say this understanding there's a pandemic, understanding I don't want anyone to lose their job. He's done a very poor job. 
He's the sole reason and took responsibility, rightfully so, for the developing the companions that are so weak now, <laughs> they're pretty much useless. Uh, goodbye, expected value of Ikoria. Oko, goodbye, expected value of Throne of the Elderan. And uh, Pharaoh's Beyond Death never had good expected value to begin with. It, we need to stop, we need to stop these idiots before they embarrass us to the mass public, which is what's happening now. The only reason they're banning these cards is they want more PR, and they, they're getting it. But we look like idiots, right? This is worse than a butt crack incident. At least that was funny. This is not funny. This is just ridiculous. Anyway, leave me a comment below what you think. Bye, guys.